identify nutritional concerns and see where you can fill in the gaps and utilize opportunities to use nutrition in a way that supports you and not in a way that hinders you. Hi dancers, welcome back to Nutrition for Dancers with me, Rachel Fine, dietitian, nutritionist, and specialist in all things dancer health, nutrition, and wellness. So today we are talking about some of the most common nutritional concerns that I see as a dietitian for dancers. But before I dive into the most common nutritional concerns, I do want to make it very apparent that there are a lot of nutritional concerns that I'm not necessarily going to speak about in this video, but I do cover most of them on my blog, dancenutrition.com. Highly recommend you check it out. Some of these nutritional concerns include whether or not dancers should go vegan, should follow, or how can they follow a plant-based diet while still getting in everything they need for optimal metabolic and physical functioning. Calories is another major concern for dancers, something that we are going to be speaking about today. The topic of processed foods and whether or not dancers should or can include these in their meal plans is another major concern that I often hear about. But for today, we are focusing on three major overarching concerns that I see most as a dietitian for dancers. Let's dive into what they are. Now, there's two main things that really get in the way when it comes to a dancer's nutritional status. First things first, and it's pretty straightforward, is a super busy schedule. Dancers are most often on the go, traveling to classes, perhaps balancing an intense academic coursework plan with a pretty intense dancing schedule as well. The other major obstacle impeding upon a dancer's nutritional status is, of course, the prevalence of dancer diet culture and the amount of misinformation that dancers do receive, whether it be from social media, whether it be from just the internet, in regard to what, how much, or when they should be eating. So the three major concerns that I'm chatting about today really do reflect those overarching obstacles that often get in the way for a dancer. The first is gonna be appetite dysregulation. So let's first chat a little bit about what appetite regulation means. Now this is not referring to any supposed amount or level of control around when or how much you eat, but rather your ability to both listen and honor intuitive cues of hunger, fullness, and of course, satisfaction. Now that third one, satisfaction, is, might not necessarily always be a priority, especially when it comes to certain things that might or might not be accessible at the moment. So let's first really focus on appetite cues of hunger and fullness. Now, when you are experiencing appetite regulation, you're often experiencing a, a subtle ebb and flow of these cues throughout your day. This is totally normal for humans. This is totally normal for dancers. But remember, a dancer's baseline of what they need in regards to nutritional intake is higher than the average person's. So the ability to maintain appetite regulation as a dancer often involves more frequent and more substantial meals and snacks to help sustain those steady ebbs and flows of hunger and fullness, those natural ebbs and flows that we do experience throughout the course of a day. Now, appetite dysregulation. Common reasons for this, as I mentioned earlier, it's a busy schedule. When we are super busy, sometimes we can easily just forget to eat a meal or a snack. That steady flow of your appetite, of your hunger and fullness cue starts to look a little bit more like this. Now, if you are experiencing a more extreme level of hunger, you're often going into your meals and snacks with the sole purpose of making up for that energy deficit. So tools like mindful eating in these instances often go out the window because at that moment, your body is really only focusing on making sure it gets what it needs from a biological standpoint. We often call this rebound hunger and it's essentially extreme hunger where your body, again, is really prioritizing its biological need for nourishment. So choosing foods that might satisfy you more, being able to tune in or build a more mindful eating experience really are not the priority in this moment. So this is a very common experience experience with appetite dysregulation, you're experiencing these moments of extreme hunger, which are most often then followed by moments of extreme feelings of fullness, eating past a point 
of physical comfort. So I'm not referring to any instances of portion control or even sticking to any specific serving size or going over a serving size. I'm actually really only focusing on the somatic feelings after a meal. And most often with appetite dysregulation, you are going between these extremes, feeling incredibly hungry to then often feeling a point of physical discomfort after eating. Now within this nutritional concern is often the challenge of building a supportive relationship with food because most often dancers will then feel as if they are often quote unquote overeating, maybe binge eating, maybe even emotional eating when in fact your concern of perhaps eating too much is actually a reflection of not eating enough earlier on. So this is a major concern for a lot of dancers and the best way you're going to navigate it is by honoring what we call practical hunger. Practical hunger is eating in response to a flexible schedule. I'm not talking about strict times on your meals and snacks. I'm talking about having a bit more intent, planning ahead, mainly planning emergency snacks so you don't end up in these situations where you are experiencing extreme hunger. Now you can utilize the hunger fullness scale to help you in identifying a range of comfortable hunger and comfortable fullness and how you can navigate through your day experiencing both of these instances. Practical hunger is really gonna set forth a flexible eating routine most often. It includes several meals and snacks spread regularly throughout your day. This is really gonna help best support you in regards to achieving appetite regulation and not appetite dysregulation. Now also keep in mind that appetite dysregulation can even occur from instances like anxiety, nerve, stress. We often see this around auditions. We often see this around uh, performance seasons. So you always want to check in with yourself. Even if you're feeling really great about how you do feel hunger and fullness and honor those cues, just know that it at separate points in your year, things can change. Appetite dysregulation can actually creep up on us rather quickly uh, and without us noticing before we know it, you know, we're a week to even three weeks in to maybe it's a performance season, maybe it's a, um, an intense audition season. And before you know it, we are uh, navigating through these extremes of the hungerfulness scale. So always check back in, utilize practical hunger to help navigate through what could be a period of appetite Type dysregulation. Now the next major nutritional concern that I see amongst dancers is the vulnerability to wellness trends. So I say it all the time, misinformation is rampant in studios, it's rampant on social media, right? We need to know how to identify the dieting mentality, of course, a product of dancer diet culture. So the most common wellness trends that I see amongst dancers, clean eating. When dancers are partaking in clean eating habits, they are prioritizing nutrition information and quote unquote health, but in a way that is extremely restrictive. We really want to be weary here. First things first, and it deserves an entire video in of itself, processed foods are not bad. Processed foods are actually an extremely convenient way for dancers to refuel their body. But if you're focusing on a clean eating or wellness type of lifestyle, you're often avoiding these foods and therefore missing optimal opportunities to replenish your energy and support muscle recovery. The problem with wellness trends is they're super sneaky. Since the 90s, we have seen a major shift in the linguistics of diet culture, right? We don't even really hear about dieting so much anymore. We hear about wellness. We hear about quote unquote lifestyle changes. So steer clear, clean eating is quite restrictive. It also moralizes food. It makes us feel like certain foods are good, certain foods are bad. Now, don't get me wrong, there are foods that are more nutrient dense than other foods. These foods are going to provide more nutritional benefits for your body, but remember, nutrition information can guide our choices. It should never dictate them. There is room in your meal plan for all foods, no matter their nutrient density. And attempts to completely avoid or restrict certain foods usually end up backfiring in the long run. This is often where we get back to that idea of appetite dysregulation. We'll see dancers eventually overdo it on foods that they are attempting to or have restricted for so long in their past. So we really wanna make sure that we're steering clear of that restrictive mindset and making sure that where you get your nutrition information from is a credible source. Titles like nutritionists, believe it or not, 
coach, nutrition coach, lifestyle coach, these are not regulated titles. Really anyone can utilize them. You want to make sure when it comes to nutrition that you are receiving your information from a registered dietitian nutritionist who is further well versed in intuitive eating and the anti-diet approach. But we still, even in these instances, have to be quite careful because anti-diet, intuitive eating, these have become quite buzzy words in the health and wellness world. So in order to really identify whether or not that advice is supporting you and not restrictive, I highly recommend you start to reconnect to how you feel within your meals and snacks. Are you feeling like you are missing out on experiences with friends? Are you feeling like you need to micromanage your food choices, your calorie intake, your macro intake? Are you feeling like you need to exhibit caution or moderation or willpower when it comes to perhaps less nutrient dense foods because if these are things that you're experiencing then chances are the advice the information you're reading is actually coming from the dieting mentality and we want to steer clear of that and the third overarching nutrition concern that i see amongst dancers of course is the way nutrition is utilized for injury prevention so building strong bones this is incredibly important for dancers but if a dancer is either not eating enough throughout their day or perhaps not including foods that might be rich in certain nutrients, specifically calcium, vitamin D, phosphorus and magnesium, then we can see an increased onset of bone-related injuries like stress fractures. This can also commonly be seen amongst dancers who are 100% plant-based or vegan. Now realize that doesn't mean that dancers can't follow these lifestyles. You can in fact follow a vegan lifestyle and have it not be restrictive. It just should be planned alongside the help of a registered dietitian nutritionist to make sure that your intent behind these lifestyles is not coming from a restrictive place. And if you are currently in recovery for disordered eating or an eating disorder, then these 100% plant-based lifestyles might not actually be supporting you, especially within your ability to heal from diet culture. But with that being said, crafting meals and snacks that are rich in the macronutrients, carbs, protein, fat, incorporating foods that are rich in those micronutrients that I mentioned earlier, calcium, vitamin D, of course, other micronutrients that are important for dancers include iron, zinc, and B12. You can learn way more about all of these nutrients on my blog, dancenutrition.com. But for the most part, these are your three overarching nutritional concerns that I see amongst dancers. And just to review, we're talking about appetite dysregulation, vulnerability to wellness trends, and of course, the role that diet can play in a dancer's risk of injury. Identify nutritional concerns and see where you can fill in the gaps and utilize opportunities to use nutrition in a way that supports you and not in a way that hinders you. Until next time.